extremely sophisticated understanding of the movement of the stars and celestial bodies. actually looking at these stars through bands of dust. The electromagnetic force actually varies in intensity over billions of light years. have found out that there is a huge tube of ions floating between the sun and the earth like an umbilical cord of radiation. Whenever there's anything that goes on magnetically in the sun, it very swiftly happens to the earth. that a person's experience seems to be best described as fields of electromagnetism and, and other phenomena. And so we would expect a system that is vastly more complex in its patterning of electromagnetic fields to have some vastly more complex consciousness. If we were an ant, you know, we would have very different notions of complexity, I think. There's no real evidence that we live in a bounded, finite universe. So what does it mean for one thing to be more complex than the other, except from where you're standing? The ancient people had it right in at least one respect when they were worshiping the sun and the moon and these other celestial bodies as divine intelligences.
If you zoom out so that the entire solar system or the entire galaxy were the same scale as an individual cell or an individual human being, the brain, the heart, and the gut, these three major nerve centers, send out command signals, neurotransmitters, and photonic cues to the rest of the body. We see exactly the same thing going on with the sun with respect to the planets. A similar pattern across scales. Evolution is the kind of thing that's just generally means change and that it can happen within a single generation. And in fact, most of who we are isn't coded by the linear sequence of base pairs in our genome. It's coded by the way that those genes turn themselves on and off. It's really a pattern of expression more than it is even just a, a linear code. There's always this tie between creation and destruction. The way that our minds and our bodies interact, the expression of our DNA, um, that these things are different from age to age. We can equally well argue that evolution is obviously ramping up into higher and higher levels of complexity at the same time that we can argue that everything is decaying and falling apart and that the metabolism of all of these organisms is only speeding up the process. We can make all kinds of absolute claims and those absolute claims are absolutely useless because they always leave out half of it. We're all participating in the flesh of this planetary superorganism. In the same way that all these little cells down here are currently having a conversation about how they're participating in me. Whatever it is we do, we are embedded and therefore entrained to the electromagnetic body of our planet. And therefore, whatever happens to it happens to us. When the planet has an idea, a whole bunch of people think they have an idea at the same time. You don't have to believe that the planet's motions are causing anything. You just have to believe in an hour hand and a second hand. It's not that like the hour hand causes the second hand, it's that it's all one thing and it's all moving together. The electromagnetic force seems to change in its intensity over billions of light years. That these things that we took as eternal constants in our reality 
are actually variables that across space the laws actually change